Welcome to Simply Explained English. I am Lisa. And I'm Eric. Do you want to improve your English easily? If so, you're in the right place. So let's get started and make English easy. So Eric, what are the words today? The first word today is precious. Then we will continue with reputation and to involve. Then to weigh up. And the final one is in terms of something. Okay, let's start with the first word. The first word today is precious. Precious. Precious means very valuable or important, something that you love or care about very much. When we say something is precious, we mean it's special and worth a lot to us. Exactly. Let me give an example sentence. This ring is precious to me because it was my grandmother's. It means that the ring is very important and valuable to the person because it belonged to their grandmother. Good explanation. Now it's your turn, Lisa. Can you give us another example? Sure. Here's another example. Time is precious, so don't waste it. It means that time is very valuable and important, so we should use it wisely and not waste it. Perfect! So, as you can see, precious is used when talking about money or things that are valuable in meaning. Yes, and precious is often used with things like jewelry, time, memories, or even people, when they are very special or important to us. Now, let's have a look at a short dialogue to show how precious is used in a conversation. Wow! That ring is beautiful. Is it new? No, it's actually very old. It was my mother's and she gave it to me. It's really precious to me. That's so special. You're lucky to have something so precious. In this dialogue, Sophie says the ring is precious to her because it belonged to her mother. It's valuable because it's special to her, not because of money. This shows that precious can describe things with a lot of emotional value. Yes. So, Eric, would you say precious is a common word? Yes, I'd say it's fairly common, especially when people talk about things that are important to them, like memories, people, or meaningful items. It's not a word you would use in casual conversations about everyday things, but when something has deep value, Precious is a perfect word. I agree. It's a bit more formal than words like special or valuable, but it adds a stronger sense of importance. Absolutely. So, when you want to talk about something that is really important or special to you, you can say, it's precious. Great advice. Well, that's all for the word precious. Let's move on to our next word. The next word is reputation. Reputation. Reputation is a noun. It means the opinion that people have about someone or something. For example, if many people think you're honest and hardworking, you have a good reputation. But if people think you're untrustworthy, you have a bad reputation. Yes, reputation is how people see you or what they think of you based on your actions, behavior, or even the things you've said. Let's give some example sentences, Lisa. My sentence is, John has a good reputation because he is always helpful. Great sentence. Could you explain it, Eric? Sure. It means that people think John is a good person because he helps others. So, he has a good reputation. It's my turn. The restaurant has a great reputation for its delicious food and excellent service. It means that people have good opinions about the restaurant. They believe it has high quality food and service, so the restaurant has a good reputation. Thanks for explaining, Lisa. Before we move on, let's talk about how we use reputation in sentences. Sometimes we say a reputation for something. 
For example, he has a reputation for being late. Here, for tells us why someone has a reputation. Exactly. You can also say someone has a reputation as something. For example, she has a reputation as a great teacher. Here, as shows the role or quality that someone is known for. Now, let's do a short dialogue using reputation. Have you heard about the new cafe in town? Yes, I've heard. It has a good reputation for its coffee. Really? I thought. It had a bad reputation because some people said the service was slow. Hmm. Maybe it depends on the day, but I'm going to try it myself and see. That was a good dialogue. The word reputation can be used in many situations, like talking about people, places, or even businesses. Now, let's have a little chat about the word. Do you think reputation is a formal or informal word? I think reputation is a bit more formal. We often hear it in business or when talking about people more seriously, but you can still use it in casual conversations. I agree. Reputation can help people make decisions about who to hire, where to eat, or even which products to buy. Yes, and it's important because everyone has a reputation, even places like restaurants or stores, so it's a useful word to know. And remember, reputation can be good or bad. Absolutely. Okay, I think we explained reputation pretty well, Eric. Let's move on to our next word. Sure. The next word is involve. Involve. It's used a lot in English, and it has two meanings. The first meaning of involve is to include someone or something in an activity or situation. For example, if you are involved in a project, it means you are part of the project and doing something for it. The second meaning of involve is when something requires or needs certain actions. So, if something involves a lot of work, it means you need to do a lot of work to complete it. Yes, it's very common in English. Let's start with the first meaning. Here's the first example sentence. The teacher involved the students in the discussion. It means that the teacher made the students join the discussion. The students are taking part in the conversation. Now, for the second meaning, the job involves working late hours. This means that working late hours is part of the job. If you accept the job, you will have to work late as part of your responsibilities. Let's talk a little more about how to use involve. It's a verb, and it's often followed by a noun or an activity. For example, involve people or involve work in. When you're talking about activities, you often use the ing form of the verb, like involve working, involve studying, and so on. Good point, Lisa. Now, let's do a short dialogue using the word involve with both meanings. This new project sounds interesting. Will I be involved? Yes. The boss has decided to involve you in the planning stage. It also involves working late hours, so be ready. No problem. I'm happy to be involved with the project. We should also involve John in the project, I think. Yes, why not? Let's talk about this later. That was a great dialogue, Eric. Involve is such a flexible word with different uses, don't you think? Yes, it really is. You can use it in so many situations. Eric, do you think involve is common? Definitely. Involve is very common, especially at work, school, or any activity that requires planning and teamwork. People often use it to talk about who should be included. Plus, the two meanings make it even more useful and common. Well said, Eric. Okay, well, that's it for the word involve. We hope you have learned it well. Let's move on to our next word. The next word is way up. Way up. Way up 
is a phrasal verb. It means to think carefully about the advantages and disadvantages of something before making a decision. For example, when you're trying to decide between two jobs, you weigh up the advantages and disadvantages of each job. It's like comparing two or more things to see, which is better or more important. You weigh up the options to make a good choice. Let's look at some example sentences. My sentence is, before buying a car, I need to weigh up the costs. It means that before I decide to buy a car, I will think about how much it will cost. I will look at the price, insurance, and other expenses to decide if buying the car is a good idea. Now, let me give my example. We weighed up the advantages of moving to a new city before making a final decision. It means that, before we decided to move to a new city, we thought about some advantages like new job opportunities and better living conditions, and then we made our choice. Great explanation. Now, let's hear a short dialogue on how the word is used in a conversation. So, have you decided whether to take the new job offer? Not yet. I'm still weighing up the salary and the work hours. I agree. It's important to weigh up all the details before making a big decision like this. That was a great dialogue. Weigh up is such a useful phrase when you're making decisions, don't you think, Eric? Yes, I agree. It's really helpful when you're thinking about big choices in life, like moving, changing jobs, or even buying something expensive. Eric, would you say weigh up is more formal or informal? I think it's pretty neutral. You can use it in both formal and informal conversations. It's a phrase you could use with friends, but also in a work setting when you're discussing options or plans. That's true. And it's a good phrase for anyone who wants to express that they're thinking carefully about their options. Yes, it's always important to weigh up your choices before making a decision. Well, that's all for today's word way up. We've reached the last word of today. So Eric, what is the last word today? The last word today is in terms of something. This is a common phrase used to talk about a specific aspect or feature of something. It helps us focus on one part of a bigger topic. For example, if you're talking about a job, you might say in terms of salary, meaning you're only talking about the money part of the job, not other things like the work hours. So if you're talking about something, but only want to focus on one part of it, you use in terms of. Let's look at some example sentences to understand it better. The city is great in terms of public transport. It means that the public transport in the city is really good. So, when you say in terms of public transport, you're only talking about how good the buses and trains are, not other things like restaurants or parks. That's a good example. Here's mine. The two cars are very similar, but in terms of price, one is much cheaper than the other. It means that when we compare the two cars based on their price, not anything else. We're only looking at prices. Let's hear an example dialogue about the phrase. I'm looking for a new laptop. What can you tell me about this one? Well, in terms of performance, this is the best model. How about the battery life? In terms of battery life, it can last up to 10 hours on a single charge. Sounds great. And in terms of price? In terms of price, the other one is cheaper. That was a good example, Lisa. It shows how, in terms of, helps to focus on specific aspects of the laptop. Yes, Eric. Well, what would you say about in terms of? It's very common. You'll hear it a lot in both formal and informal conversations when people want to focus on specific areas of a discussion. It's a good way to break down information and compare things. I agree. It's a very useful phrase when you're trying to explain something clearly and focus on just one part of the topic. You might hear it at work, in school, 
or even in everyday conversations about choices or decisions. Exactly. It's a phrase that works well in many situations, from business meetings to casual chats with friends. Absolutely. So, next time you want to compare or explain something in a specific way, remember to use in terms of. That's great advice. Well, I think we have finished the podcast today. Yes, Eric. I hope our followers found today's episode helpful. I hope so, Lisa. Okay, thanks for listening. Keep practicing your English. And stay tuned. Bye for now.